In this chapter, we'll talk about using cameras in Create to add a narrative pace to our warehouse scene. Navigation of the cameras can be done using several methods. By pressing the Alt key and holding the left mouse button, the camera will rotate around a focal point. The middle button will track the camera, and the middle scroll wheel or the right mouse button will dolly in and out. After selecting an object like a single box in the scene by toggling the prim mode function on the toolbar on the left, the F key will focus the selected object in the view to make rotating around a central focal point easier. Using the up arrow on the keyboard will move your selection up the hierarchy to the parent object in your selection stack, creating a larger focal point and increasing your field of view. Hitting the escape key will clear your selection. Traditional gameplay navigation keys can also be used to move your camera around. Holding the right mouse button, pressing the W key moves the camera forward, the S key moves backward, and the A and D keys will track the camera left and right. If your mouse has one, you can adjust the speed of the tracking motions by using the middle scroll wheel. Next, we'll add some cameras to the scene so we can begin to block out a few shots in a previs sequence. There are several ways cameras can be added to the stage. Using the Create menu in the main menu bar, select Camera. A camera is added to the Stage View panel. Right-clicking directly in the viewport also allows to select Create Camera. You also have a third option to right-click directly in the Stage panel and select Create Camera. If you select the new camera in the stage list, you can look through it by selecting it from the list in the upper left of the viewport identified by the camera icon. You'll see here, by selecting to view camera 2, the camera was added to the origin, which can make it cumbersome to move it back into a specific location in the scene. To make things easier, let's look through the original perspective camera from the list. We can first delete the newly created cameras located at the origin, and then click on the perspective camera again, and this time select Create Camera from View. It simply duplicates the camera at the current position. We can name the camera by double-clicking on it in the stage panel and giving it a shot-specific name, in this case, camera underscore sh001. Now we can place our first shot camera in the scene. We'll move the camera to the opposite side of the warehouse and establish our place in the scene using a wide shot. Then we'll create a second shot camera using the same method of creating it from the current one. Name your shot cameras as you go along. Here we're using the name Camera Shot 2. Looking through our new shot camera, we can use all the navigation methods discussed to block out a second shot using a nice composition. Here, we'll move the camera to floor level with some other boxes and stacked pallets in the foreground to add depth to this shot. Using the real-time display while blocking out cameras speeds up the shot blocking process because we can view each preliminary shot with lighting and textures, and we can test various camera techniques during the layout and previs phase. With the camera still selected, we can edit some of its properties in the property panel. The focal length is modified to create a slightly wider angle, and the focal distance is used in combination with the f-stop setting to create some more dramatic depth of field. Let's use the Shot 1 camera to make a new Shot 3 that we can animate using Create's keyframing capabilities. First, we'll name the camera with the Shot 3 naming convention, and then look through it to begin setting up a beginning position for the animation of the camera. Here we're choosing a down shot at the far end of the warehouse. Now, to save a keyframe at that position, right-click on the Translate label in the Transform matrix in the Properties and select Set Key. Do the same for the Rotation Transforms. We now have a keyframe at frame 0. The timeline is displayed by using the Window Animation menu to select Timeline. It appears below the viewport. The frame indicator can be scrubbed along the timeline. The range of view on the timeline can be adjusted by sliding the handles at either end, and you can also slide the range up and down the length of the timeline. The working frames per second is set here as well. We're using 24 frames per second in this example. You can select the Auto button. 
That makes it easy to automatically save a new keyframe at the current frame whenever you move the selected asset. Here the current frame is set at 120 and will move the camera down the length of the warehouse to a position close to the floor at the front of the row of racks. Scrubbing the animation after the repositioning is done allows you to inspect the animation path and timing. Here it becomes obvious the default timing between the keys we saved includes an ease in and ease out at the beginning and end of the range. To more closely inspect the timing of the keyframes, you can use the Curve Editor window, called from the Window Animation menu. You can see the curves in the graph with the keys marked and the keys can be selected and repositioned using constraints on time or position. The tangents can also be modified using preset values of linear or spline in addition to adjusting the tangent handles directly. Now we can add all the cameras we made to a shot list which will assemble and create sequencer. Reviewing the cameras from the list, we have our establishing shot camera 1, our closer view with foreground objects in shot 2, and our animated camera in shot 3. Use the window animation menu to enable the sequencer window. It appears as a floating pane you can dock anywhere in your current window configuration. We're placing it alongside the other editor tabs below the viewport. You'll first add a shot track to the empty sequence by clicking on the plus sign and selecting Add Shot Track. Then you'll drag camera 1 from the stage view directly into the sequencer. The clip can be retimed by simply adjusting the out point of the clip in the sequencer timeline directly to the desired out frame. Here we're selecting frame 90. Then the second camera is dragged into the clip and that timing is also adjusted. Here, we'll make this shot also 90 frames to end at frame 180. The properties of the clip can be edited in the property panel to change the start and end frames of the clip in sequencer or the start and end of the incoming source frames. The third shot in our sequence was animated over 120 frames and the length of the clip is set automatically when it's dragged into the clip assembly. Playing through the sequence will switch between the static cameras at the specified frames and play the animation of shot 3. This playback of the animation sequence includes the addition of the physics impulse created in our earlier tutorial video. The impulse is delayed in this example to coincide with the animation timing of the camera for shot 3 to achieve the best visual of the collapsing boxes. Now that our sequence is assembled, we can render it out, either to a series of individual frames or an encoded movie file. To set up a capture, go to Window Rendering Movie Capture. The Movie Capture Setup pane is where to specify all your output parameters. Select your destination folder, resolution, and format for your image files, or, if you choose to, the movie file you're creating. Here we've set our output format to render an MP4 movie file over 300 frames at a resolution of 1080p. The rendering preferences can set render resolution multipliers and other display options. Once your setup is complete, click Capture Sequence in the Movie Capture panel and your sequence will be rendered to disk. Now it's your turn to get creative and have fun. Try experimenting with various collision impulses on the boxes to get varied effects and add animation to all the cameras for a more dynamic and interesting pre-visualization of the sequence.